Here's what Sword is really up to on WandaVision. What is Sword if not Hayward persevering to be the world's smarmiest jerk? That's the question that many WandaVision fans were asking themselves following the shocking final moments of Episode 8 titled Previously On. In addition to taking us on a traumatic journey through Wanda Maximoff and Agatha Harkness' pasts, WandaVision dropped yet another massive twist on us in the penultimate episode's mid credit scene, which, if you haven't watched yet, go back and watch that right now. This sequence not only answers some truly major questions about what Sword has really been up to this entire time, but also what we can expect from the epic WandaVision finale that drops this Friday on Disney+. Now, we touched upon this a little bit in our supersized Episode 8 breakdown, which if you haven't watched yet, go do that right now, but now we're going to go deep on Sword's master plans, Hayward's big plans for Wanda, the Vision, and the Hex. However, in order to talk about this in detail, we do need to spoil WandaVision Episode 8, so if you haven't watched it yet, make like Wanda herself and find the nearest exit. One moment. I have to buzz you in. I got it. Thanks. Okay, are all the spoiler fubs gone? Great, let's get into it, shall we? During the final moments of Previously On, we learn at long last what director Hayward and his sword simps are really up to, why they've been so eager to paint Wanda Maximoff as the villain and a terrorist, and what exactly Project Cataract is all about. The implications of this scene are massive. They introduce yet another major antagonist for Wanda, Vision, and the newly superpowered Monica Rambeau to contend with, in addition to Agatha Harkness, who is currently holding the twins Billy and Tommy hostage. Where are my children? Where are my children? But let's go through this question by question so we can break down the who, what, where, when, and why S.W.O.R.D. is doing what they're doing. And let's start with the biggest question of all, what is Project Cataract? So, Project Cataract is S.W.O.R.D.'s top secret initiative to build their own sentient weapon so they can observe and respond, as their name might suggest, with lethal force all their own. Previously, we speculated that Hayward and company could be building something like the mutant hunting sentinels in their massive headquarters hangar, which still could be the case, but in terms of Project Cataract, it's purely about repurposing the vision and turning them into the loaded gun they can point and shoot at whomever they want, like the white version we see here. We first learned about Project Cataract back in Episode 6 when Darcy hacks Hayward's files, and its name probably should have been a dead giveaway, because a cataract is when the normally clear lens of an eye becomes clouded, thereby impairing your vision. And that's exactly what we see here, an impaired version of the vision. Look, no one said they were going to be subtle about it. I mean, look at their name. They made it spell sword for no reason at all. <laughs> That brings us to question number two. Why is Vision white? Well, the answer is not just so they can sell a glow-in-the-dark Funko Pop, but rather, this particular plot twist is based on John Byrne's 1989 Vision Quest storyline from West Coast Avengers 42 through 45, in which Vision goes missing, is dissected by the government and scientists who deem him too dangerous, and when he's rebuilt, he loses his personality and all of his color. This notion of Vision's personality being tied to his color has been established in the MCU. In Avengers Infinity War, when Vision dies, he fades to a grayish-purplish color, which we did see again in a particularly upsetting reveal in WandaVision Episode 4. Remember that one? Yikes. What is it? What's wrong? If you're familiar with the comics and you've been paying attention or watching our videos, you know this storyline is going to be an important part of the series since at least Episode 5, where we see security camera footage of the disassembled Vision in a sword lab and Wanda supposedly stealing Vision's corpse, which we will address in just a little bit. That imagery, though, of the Vision on the table all disassembled is directly from the pages of West Coast Avengers number 43. This white version of the Vision is basically a blank slate, a cold, emotionless android who no longer has the sympathetic synthetic idiosyncrasies of his former self. In the comics, he was based on the Avenger Wonder Man's brainwave patterns, and that gave Vision the basis of his personality. And when Vision was rebuilt, Wonder Man, who was also in love with Wanda, big yikes, refused to let them copy his brainwaves once more, so we were left with the Tabula Rasa version instead, which ultimately drove a rift between Wanda and Vision, or a Wanda Division if you will. Oh, you won't? Okay, so question three. What about White Vision in the MCU? Well, chances are he isn't going to recognize Wanda Maximoff either and will only answer to Hayward. Now, according to Bruce Banner in Infinity War, Vision's mind is made up of a complex construct of overlays. Jarvis, Ultron, Tony, Bruce, the Stone, all of them mixed together, all of them learning from one another. This version of the Vision, though, has presumably been reset to factory settings. That means a Vision versus Vision showdown is inevitable. A battle of body versus soul. 
And speaking of Soul, another Infinity Stone answers our fourth question, how did Sword get Vision up and running? Well, after painstakingly dissecting, rebuilding, and experimenting on Vision's corpse for presumably almost five years, Hayward and company rebuilt this all-white version of the Vision, but they had difficulties getting it to work. This version of the Vision is powered up by the residual chaos magic energy from the Stark Industries drone they sent into Westview to communicate with Wanda before trying to blow her and her kids to smithereens, which... Just a bad idea all around. As we saw in Avengers Age of Ultron, Vision was imbued with life by the Mind Stone, the powerful Infinity Stone housed in Loki's Scepter that, as we saw in Episode 8, greatly enhanced Wanda's powers. While the Mind Stone has been safely returned to its proper place in the time stream by Captain America at the end of Avengers Endgame, its legacy lives on through Wanda Maximoff and her chaos magic. Presumably the nature of Wanda's chaos magic, which can alter the fabric of reality and is capable of spontaneous creation, shares some commonalities with the effects of the Mind Stone. The residual energy on that drone proves to be powerful enough to boot up the vision, and whatever miniature arc reactor is in his forehead where the Mind Stone should be. Based on Darcy, Jimmy, and Monica's debate about power levels in Episode 5, Wanda's abilities seem to be fairly well documented, especially within S.W.O.R.D., so it stands to reason that Hayward might have known they needed Wanda's powers in order to get their version of the Vision up and running. Case in point, during the scenes where Wanda visits Sword HQ and you think she's going to steal Vision's body but doesn't, Hayward seems almost antagonistic like he's trying to bait Wanda into using her powers. He even mentions that Wanda has the power to bring her soulmate back online, which, very telling, very peculiar wording if you don't know exactly what this person is capable of, and in this case, that's exactly what Hayward wants, her to bring Vision back online. Now this could be a bit of a reach, but watch those scenes again with that in mind, because Hayward is definitely acting shady as hell, especially considering he's talking to a grieving Avenger about how they dissected her boyfriend for parts. Next we come to question 5, so did S.W.O.R.D. lie about Wanda stealing Vision's body? Well, the answer is yes, yes they did. Hayward's been trying to paint Wanda as the villain so they can either justify using lethal force on her, or so they can bring her into custody and use her like Hydra did, but this time as a living battery for their newly minted sentient weapon. They want Wanda to bring Vision back to life, but then, who knows if they need Wanda anymore? And this of course raises another question, question 6, is this a violation of the Sokovia Accords? And the answer is almost definitely yes. The creation of self-aware artificial intelligence like Ultron and Vision is strictly prohibited by the Sokovia Accords. And things get doubly icky when you consider that Hayward invokes the Sokovia Accords as a reason why Wanda can't take Vision's body to give him a proper funeral, because he says it's their legal and ethical obligation to dismantle the Vision, which just all types of messed up when you consider what they're really doing. And in case you forgot, the Sokovia Accords were a series of regulations that placed a number of sanctions and stringent stipulations on enhanced individuals, aka people with superpowers. The Accords were enacted partly as a result of Wanda's actions during Civil War, which had deadly consequences, as well as the devastation that follows almost any battle in which the Avengers are involved in all the time always. Another thing that Hayward mentions is that he can't let Wanda take three billion dollars of vibranium, the ultra-rare substance that makes up Vision's body, Captain America's shield, and Black Panther's suit, just so she can bury it in the ground. But then we come to question number seven. If Wanda never stole Vision's body, then how could S.W.O.R.D. track the decaying vibranium signature inside the hex? There are two possible answers here. The simplest answer is that they weren't tracking Vibranium at all, they were tracking Wanda or whatever sort of signature this new version of the Vision was emitting. Hayward and S.W.O.R.D. are clearly not above lying to get what they want, so they could easily be lying here about how they were monitoring this version of the Vision inside the Hex as well. So the other option is that Wanda's chaos magic is so strong she was able to create a simulacrum of vibranium inside of Westview. If Wanda is capable of spontaneous creation through her chaos magic on such a grand scale, it stands to reason she could create vibranium inside of the Hex as well. And that could potentially explain how and why S.W.O.R.D. was able to track the Vision, despite him being a part of the magic of the Hex, the consequences of which were made apparent during Episode 6 when he tried to leave. Okay, okay, but let's go back for a second. Question 8. Now you might be asking, what about Shuri? Didn't she rebuild the Vision's personality in Avengers Infinity War? Well, yes, she started the process, but we don't know if she actually finished it or not, because after Thanos' forces attacked Shuri's lab, Vision left to join Wanda so she could kill him by destroying the Mind Stone on his forehead, which, as we all know, did not end well for literally anyone involved. 
Besides that, Shuri was also confirmed in Avengers Endgame to be one of those people who got snapped out of existence by Thanos. So Shuri's data might finally be finished compiling, or she might have an incomplete backup of the Vision's personality matrix, but nothing is confirmed at this point in time, so we can't bank on the fact that Shuri was copying Vision's personality as a guarantee of what's to come down the line. So, question 9, what does this mean for the finale? Well, it means that Hayward has some explaining to do, especially once Monica Rambeau gets wind of this. It also means that in addition to fighting Agatha Harkness, we can almost definitely expect an epic showdown between Wanda's hex-created vision and Hayward's lab-created vision. My favorite theory right now is that Wanda will expend even more of her chaos magic energy to try and merge these two visions in a last-ditch effort to save her synthesoid spouse. But something tells me the additional trauma of seeing what sword is turned Vision into will push Wanda even further over the edge. Now that, coupled with Agatha threatening Wanda's kids and forcing her to relive her darkest moments, could be the inciting actions that lead Wanda to tear a rift in reality, causing the multiverse to start leaking into this universe. And we'll see that play out further in Spider-Man. Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And with that, we come to our tenth and final question, is this the cameo that Paul Bettany was teasing? As you may know, there's supposedly a top-secret Luke Skywalker-level cameo coming to the final episode of WandaVision. And more recently, in an interview with Esquire, Paul Bettany said, This mystery character is an actor I've longed to work with all of my life. In light of the Episode 8 reveal, many fans were quick to speculate that Bettany was being particularly cheeky with these comments, and the actor he's longed to work with all of his life is himself. One of the truest tests of any actor is whether or not they can convincingly play two different characters opposite each other in the same scene, and Bettany will almost certainly have to do that very thing in the final episode of WandaVision Season 1. Other guesses about the cameo previously included Al Pacino as the demon Mephisto or Ian McKellen as Wanda's comic book dad, Magneto, but I'd be well and truly shocked if that's what actually happens. The best alternative guess I've seen is from Drew McWeeny in his formerly dangerous newsletter, where he posits the mystery character will be Dick Van Dyke as a projection of his character Rob Petrie from The Dick Van Dyke Show. Because not only is it Wanda's favorite sitcom referenced both implicitly and explicitly on this show, but Marvel loves to digitally de-age actors. Plus, in our exclusive interviews with the WandaVision cast, Hector Navarro learned from series director Matt Shackman that they actually met with Dick Van Dyke in the lead-up to making WandaVision so they could learn from the master. So maybe, just maybe, they filmed a cameo a la Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian aided and abetted by modern technology. Only time will tell, though. That said, we will keep you up to date on all things Wanda, Vision, and WandaVision over on Nerdist.com. In the meantime, though, we have some questions for you. What did you think of S.W.O.R.D.'s big reveal? Who do you think the cameo is actually going to be? I just feel you. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com